Hello Grade 11s. Today, we will find out more about the direction of the induced current and how to predict this direction. We previously induced current in a solenoid by making use of a moving magnet. To understand the direction of the induced current, we need to examine the work done by Emil Lenz. Kiki will tell us more about that now. Lenz was among the early physicists who studied electromagnetic induction. In 1834, he came up with a law which tells us the direction of the induced current. To understand Lenz's work, let's have a look at a simple circuit. Here I have a battery of cells connected in series to a center zero ammeter, a switch and a coil. When the switch is closed, A current moves from the positive terminal into the ammeter and then through the coil from A to B and then back to the battery. Here the current moves in an anti-clockwise direction. The ammeter registers a positive reading so we can say that for this coil, the direction of a positive current is anti-clockwise. We also know that a magnetic field has been produced by the positive current moving in the coil. Here, the magnetic field direction is out of the loop. When the direction of the magnetic field is out of the loop, we say that its direction is positive too. So for this coil, the direction of both the current and the magnetic field is positive. However, when the terminals of the battery are changed around, the current moves in the opposite direction, clockwise around the coil. Now the needle of the center zero ammeter is deflected to the left, registering a negative current. The magnetic field direction is into the loop, which we call negative. So the direction of the magnetic field and of the current are both negative in this case. Now let's disconnect the battery and the switch and see what happens when a magnetic north pole moves into the coil connected to the center zero ammeter. Now, in other words, we're going to examine the direction of the current induced in a coil. Before the magnet is moved into the coil, the ammeter reads 0 amperes. Now, I'm going to move the north pole of the magnet into the coil. The direction of the magnetic field here is into the coil and so is negative. Watch what happens to the needle of the ammeter. Hey, the needle moved to the right, indicating that a small positive current has been induced in the coil, and then the needle returned to zero when the magnet stopped moving. Let's compare what happened here with what happened in the electromagnet. In the electromagnet, when the current was positive, moving in an anti-clockwise direction around the coil, the magnetic field was also positive out of the coil. But when we moved a magnet into the coil, the magnetic field direction was negative and the current induced in the coil was a positive current moving in an anti-clockwise direction. Now watch what happens when I pull the magnet out of the coil.
the needle moves to the left. Here the ammeter shows a negative reading which tells us that the current moves clockwise around the coil. Notice that the direction of the magnet's field is still into the loop in a negative direction. Now why did the ammeter give a positive reading when I inserted the magnet and a negative reading when I withdrew the magnet? Here's a clue. Think about the magnetic effect of a current passing through a coil. You may use the right hand solenoid rule in your explanation. Here's one explanation. See if you agree with this. When the north pole of the magnet is pushed into the coil, a positive reading is detected on the ammeter. This indicates that the direction of the current around the coil is in an anti-clockwise direction. But remember, whenever a current passes through a coil, a magnetic field is set up around the coil and the coil becomes an electromagnet. Because we know the direction of the current, we can find the direction of the magnetic field created in the coil. Can you recall in which direction this will be? Remember, for an electromagnet, when the direction of the current is anticlockwise, positive, the direction of the magnetic field is also positive, pointing out of the coil. This means that this end, where the magnet entered the coil, must be the north pole of the induced magnetic field. So here, the induced magnetic field opposes the magnetic field of the moving magnet. The magnetic field of the moving magnet is repelled by the north pole of the solenoid. In other words, as the north pole of the magnet moves towards the coil, it induces a magnetic field in the coil. This induced magnetic field works to reduce or oppose the inducing action of the magnet by exerting a force on the magnet that is opposite to the direction of the magnet's motion. Now let's apply the same ideas and see if they work to explain what happens when a magnet is withdrawn from the coil. Remember, when I withdrew the magnet from the coil, the ammeter reading changed from a positive to a negative reading. In this case, the direction of the induced current was clockwise around the coil. Using the right-hand solenoid rule, you can see that my thumb points to the end labeled B, where a north pole forms. So this end must be a south pole. The south pole of the solenoid attracts the north pole of the moving magnet and so tries to stop the magnet leaving the coil. Again, can you see that the induced magnetic field set up in the coil works to reduce or oppose the inducing action of the magnet by exerting a force on the magnet that is opposite in direction to the magnet's motion. These findings were summarized in Lenz's law. Let's look at a summary of this law. The induced current creates a magnetic field that opposes the change in the magnetic field of the moving magnet. This means that when a north pole moves into a solenoid, a current is induced in the solenoid. This induced current flows in such a direction that a north pole forms at the side of the solenoid where the magnet moves inward. Since similar poles repel, the two north poles repel each other. And when the north pole is removed from the solenoid, a current is induced that causes a south pole, which will attract the north pole being pulled out of it. This phenomenon can be confirmed with this next amazing experiment. You should all know that when any object falls, it accelerates uniformly downwards due to gravity. Here I have an aluminum tube which is not magnetic, and a small, powerful magnet. Now, when I drop the magnet, it accelerates downwards, just as we would expect for any object when dropped from a height. But watch what happens when I drop the magnet 
into the tube. Ready, steady, go. What happened to the magnet? <laughs> At last it falls from the tube. Clearly the moving magnet's inducing action was opposed by the magnetic field set up around the aluminium tube. The opposing force was so strong that the magnet slowed down and did not accelerate downwards at the usual acceleration due to gravity. You can also try that interesting experiment at home. The last thing to do today is to find the direction of the induced current. Kike will show us an easy way to determine the induced current direction. When a North Pole enters a coil, the direction of the magnetic field is into the coil. In this case, we use the fingers of the right hand to point in the same direction. The induced current will move in the direction that the thumb can curl in. In this case, the thumb points to the right and can bend up. So the induced current moves in an anti-clockwise direction. Of course, you can confirm that this is correct by using the right-hand solenoid rule and checking that the induced pole at the end of the coil does oppose the inducing action of the moving magnet. The current is in a solenoid, so to confirm the direction of the current, we use the right-hand solenoid rule again. When a north pole is pushed into the solenoid, a north pole forms on the left-hand side of the coils as shown in the diagram. According to the right-hand rule, the thumb points to the north and the curled fingers show the direction of the current. When we look from the side of the approaching magnet, this is in an anti-clockwise direction. This is just as Kiki predicted. Now we quickly insert the south pole of a bar magnet into the coil. Again, the coil is connected to a closed electrical circuit that is not carrying a current at the start of the experiment. What is the direction of the current when viewed from the approaching pole of the magnet? If you said clockwise, well done. The approaching south pole induces a current in the coil so that the end of the coil closest to the approaching magnets also becomes a south pole. This occurs if the induced current is in a clockwise direction as viewed from the approaching south pole of the magnet. This brings us to the end of our lesson on the direction of the induced current. Next time, we will look in detail at the magnetic field that affects the induced current. Until then, goodbye and try that interesting experiment with the metatube and the magnet.